book team so today i'm coming to you with another book challenge i thought this one was created by emma from Mamba books but now i'm not so sure because i was looking at the video that i thought it was and i was like those questions are not the ones i am thinking about basically the gist of this challenge is that every single book on your bookshelf has a story it annoys me so much that i cannot find the original creator of this challenge but i will leave the original video in the description if i can find it but the gist of this challenge is that every single book on your bookshelf has a story behind it whether it be you it was your first signed book it has some meaning to you it got you into reading just it has some significance to you i don't know how valid that is going to be i don't think every single book on my bookshelf has a story to tell and particularly a very interesting one but at least you guys will get some wrecks nonetheless so let's get right into it. So for this challenge, I'm going to be using these four shelves. Uh, I think I'm sure that these are, this is like 80 or so books, maybe 90. And I'm going to be using a random number generator to pick a random book on my bookshelf and then try to tell you guys a story if I have one. So the first random number is 70, that is 68, 69, 70. Divergent by Veronica Roth. I have not read this book and I honestly don't think I am. Someone commented on my video today that like, spare yourself the time to read this book. like you will regret reading it just don't subject yourself to it and i was like that is the most unflinching and brutal response someone has ever given to a book i talked about in a video like that makes me scared to read this book if someone hates it with that much passion and honestly i'm not really excited about it i the story behind me getting this book is that i was going to my local community center where i like play basketball and in the entrance they had this like book rack next to the entrance where people could donate books and other people could take them for free. And I, and I thought it was a really good thing. So like every every time I went to the community center, I'd always look at that rack to see if there was any book I wanted. Mostly they were adults, so I wasn't really interested in most of them. But this was one of them out at the rack. I don't know who gave up Divergent and they probably didn't like it either. But I did pick it up because I had heard of it because it is so, so popular on BookTube. But then I read the description and I was like, I'm not really interested in this book. And people say it gets worse like right away. Like the second book isn't good and then the third book is trash and the same thing with the movies and overall i just don't have a passion to read this book at all like i don't know why i would it does not look interesting at all to me i feel like it just wrote that dystopian rage and just wrote it really well and got really really popular but i have no desire at all to read this book so that was this book that i did have a story behind i don't know how many of those books i will actually have our right, so next number is 42. down across by ramadi i have a story behind this one too look at that so there's actually a really really exciting story behind this one so this year on a friday i was sitting in a history class and we had this like teacher what's it called when a teacher's like there to like get their experience and it's like a step to becoming a full-time teacher like we had one of those teachers and i knew him before he actually entered the history class i knew him before that and he knew that i liked books so on friday he was like on Saturday, I'm going to this festival in Brooklyn and it's centered around books. And so I searched this festival up, the Brooklyn Books Festival, and it looked like it was going to be a lot, a lot of fun. There was like Joyce Carol Oates there, Arvin Amati there, Randy Rebuy there. It looked like I was going to have a lot of fun there. The thing was, the festival was the very next day, and it was in Brooklyn. If you do not know, I live in Pennsylvania, and where I am, it's like pretty fun. Like, not that far away, but pretty far away to get to Brooklyn. So I didn't really think I was going to be able to go. This is why my parents are so amazing. My mom agreed to basically just go with me there to this book festival. And my mom doesn't really, like, like books that much. But she knows I love them to a T. She knows that I'm so passionate about books. And so me and my mom just went to the book, to the book festival. It was such a great bonding experience with my mom. We had so much fun, like, on the train. Because we had to try to... No, the bus. We had so much fun on the bus and then the train, like trying to figure out like what we were doing because we had no clue what we were doing. And as especially because like New York, that Brooklyn area, it's pretty like packed. No clue what we were doing, but we had a lot of fun doing it on the bus, on the train, and then ending up at the Brooklyn Book Festival. Like it was so, so much fun. And then at the festival, there were like these panels, kind of like book cons. Now one of the panels, Arvin Amadi was speaking. And I was actually there for Randy Rebuy. I wasn't even there for Arv Arvin Amadi. But then I saw his book, Girl Gone Viral, on one of like the stacks there. I don't know, like the stacks where you could go and purchase books. And I was like, that cover looks good. I'm going to see if I'm actually interested in the book. And actually, the Girl Gone Viral wasn't that good. I DNF'd it while in a reading club, so maybe it is good. I just wouldn't know because I was in a reading club. But then I found out that he had another book down in a cross. So then I watched the panel and I was like, I really like Arvin Amadi. And so then I went to get his autograph 
we talked for a while. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And I will show you guys his signature. The, basically, this book it revolves around crosswords. So if the light will let you see this. He put like a crossword here, signed his name, and said for Sakroop. And then for his autograph for Girl Gone Viral, he put it like a more elaborate like thing. He said, Sakroop, I am floored by all that you've already accomplished. Can't wait to read your books. He's a very nice person. But yeah, two for two on at least semi-interesting stories. 74, 75. Yeah, I have no story behind this one. It was in one of my most recent videos about save one drop one rewrite one and like i kept getting maze runner book i only remember reading the first one i remember i remember reading like all of them but i don't remember actually like anything about all any of the books except for the first one and so i kept getting maze runner books for some reason and i was so mad because i always had to drop one and i could have had such better books in those positions but yeah this is book three in the maze runner series and I don't know. Not at all an interesting story. I'm pretty sure there's a movie for the Maze Runner, which like, I don't know why I haven't watched it yet, because I really did like the first Maze Runner book, and I might just reread the series to remember what happened. All right, literally 21. And that is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I actually have not read this one either. I picked it up as part of the Krusty Book Club that Chanel from Chanel Time is hosting, and I have not read it because it is already like the 22nd. But I still need to read one of its us for the next chapter book club. And so I don't think I'll have time to get to it. I also bought such a fun age for the Black Hotties book club. And I also have not read that one either. I really wanted to, but I just could not get to them. But yeah, Radio Science, I have such a like history for this book. Like I've always just held it in such a high standard because it's just so, so popular. So many people consider it as one of their favorite books. And I actually did like get into this book. I don't, I think I had to like stop reading. I didn't DNF it. I, I just had to stop reading it because some other book came up that I had to read. By no means did I DNF it. I was actually really interested to see where it would go. But I was watching this video recently that like has the same exact premise as this book. And it was a video by Dana Gonzalez about Radio Rebel, which is like this Disney show. And I don't know if this book was inspired by that show, but it's also about this girl that nobody knows is like this runner of a podcast and I don't know if that's like a trope or something but like I just saw the semblance between those two like m books and movies and I was like I need to like note that and tell you guys because like it's eerily similar and also that Radio Rebel video by Danny Gonzalez is so funny 39. Because You Love to Hate Me by Renee Arie. I'm not going to go through all the list. It's 13 authors and 13 booktubers. Uh, the story behind this one, I guess, is that I read it for this reading vlog that I'm not at all proud of, but my mom kept pushing me to publish it because I had spent so much hard work reading 120 pages every day and vlogging every single day. And I'm not really proud of it, of how it came out, but you can still watch it if you want to. It's not the worst. But I read this as part of the 13 books I did read that month. And I remember really liking this. I I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I was. Even the like the booktuber add-ons. I really thought this book was so creative. If you do not know, it's an anthology of like these fairy tale ones. Well, it's not really fairy tale. It's based in comic comic book inspired enemies and pop culture and classics such as Medusa from Greek mythology, Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes. The Giant from Jack and the Meansack. The stories were really creative and really gave us fresh spin on the stories while also being really well written and giving us a lot of important questions. I feel like there's a story behind why these book, why these pages are like that. But I heard, oh, this was one of the first books that I got from Thrift Books. I haven't gotten that many, but this was, yeah, this was, along with Loving of the Filters, this was one of the books that I got from Thrift Books. 21 again. All right, here we go, 66. Every Day by David Levithan. All right, we do have a story behind this one. All right, so if you watch my 350 Q&A, you basically already knew the story. Mm, not really. But I tell you the story in that Q&A, about uh, why I started BookTube, about that journey, about how the like, quarantine affected it, and how my parents really pushed me to start my channel, and how a 24-hour reading vlog was my first vlog that I ever posted. It's now privated. And this was one of the books that I read in that 24-hour reading vlog. This was the book I read after Fangirl. I remember finishing it like an hour before like my 24 hours ended. I'm feeling so exhilarated that I had read two books in 24 hours, that I'd vlogged the entire thing. And I was also like excited but anxious to start my channel. Like this book means a lot to me. In, in the sense that like it meant a lot in the terms of like 
it represents the start of my channel and i even though i now find things problematic with every day i don't like it fangirl that much both those books just mean a lot to me but i remember when i did finish every day i remember like thinking that it was an all-time favorite and i still really really like it and it would be an all-time favorite if it were not for that one chapter that was just so problematic to me and if you've read the book you probably know which chapter i'm talking about i just feel like david levitan should have done his research when portraying that type of character if that's all i'm going to say and i just thought this book was so creative about like the spirit that inhabits a different body every single day. I just thought that was such a fun idea. And I still highly recommend this book. Just be wary that it is problematic. 68, 69, 70, 71. Mockingjay. Do I have a story behind Mockingjay? I read the entire Hunger Games series for this 24 hour reading vlog where I tried to read all the Hunger Games books in one day before the release of Songbirds and Snakes. And now I highly regret doing that, even though the video got pretty popular. Well, at the time it was pretty popular. I wore my channel and lots of new people found me through that video. I highly regret doing that, because I wish I had taken my time with this series and really soaked up like every detail and like everything about this book. Well, I still remember the main plot line and just going from one book to the next really helped me with like, not having to wait to find out what happened next. And it was still a really fun video. I just wish I had it done it i feel like if i did reread this book i still wouldn't like where the series went i've talked about this before i just didn't like where the series went it didn't like it could have gone a wholly different way and that would have worked for me but the but the direction it took and the way everything was carried out like it, it just was so weird and i just thought it did a disservice to like what the first book set up but i could definitely see where people are coming from when they say they did like where the series went and if they liked this book i mean it still was a pretty solid book and i by no means hate the series 19 frankly in love the story behind this is that i talk about it in every single video somehow like how did it get brought up in this video like I am so sorry that this book gets brought up in every video, but that's just the excuse that the world, the universe knows that I, my duty in this world is to tell you guys to read this book. That should be the message that you should pick this book up. I don't really have a story. I wish I had a story. I guess I kind of do because I would always see this book at Barnes & Noble. They were like promoting the side edition and I was always like, ooh, this book looks interesting. It's sprayed edges and a side book and i was like why don't i pick this book up but there were always just other books that i wanted to pick up more so i was just sidetracked this book but then one day i was like all right i'm gonna pick this book and actually try it and i'm so sad that i didn't pick up the side edition i just didn't know if i was going to like it at the time so i didn't know if i should pick up a side edition or not which is stupid because i picked up the side edition for the book thief before i even read it but yeah obviously i ended up loving this book. Our second next book is 51, and that was Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Eddie Emmy. I literally just talked about this in the Pandora's Box book tag, so you can go watch that to like see my full thoughts. But yeah, this was the first book that I buddy read, and I buddy read it with Kirsten's Corner. And yeah, there isn't much of a story behind this book. Not really. It was a good book. I just don't have a story. Oh yeah, I was rushing to read this book before Indian Readathon. I think like two days before Indian Readathon started. I think it was only like 200 pages into it. And so I made the schedule. This is how many pages I'm going to read every single day if I want to finish it before Indian Readathon. And I don't think I did. I think I had to finish up like the last few pages on the first day of the Readathon. Remember that was a lot of fun to like rush to read this book. And fortunately like it was a fast paced book so that I could finish it up. But yeah, that is the only real story. 28, 29. 30, 31. A list of gauges by Robin Ralph. Something I remember about this book is that I once made this video called 20 books to read in 2020. And I did not brought that video. It was one of my earlier videos. And this was on that list. And it was one of the first books that I bought for BookTube. I think it was in my first book haul. Like I was super, super excited for this book. Like all the books that I bought in that first book haul, like I was super pumped for like this book just sounded like my type of book i think i mentioned this in one of my other videos but i unfortunately dnf this book i just couldn't get into the characters this wasn't interesting enough for me to continue going on i was just so so bored the writing style was just so bland to me and i might give this book another try but like both julian and adam just felt like the same people just with like different situations and i just did not like this book unfortunately 
But yeah, I remember being really, really excited to read it. Radio Silence again. People really like the number 20 one. I completely do not have a story behind this one. I remember liking this book. Oh, I do. Okay. So when I read the series, I did not actually purchase the books. So the way I got these like beautiful hardcover editions is my brother, who is amazing, was in the science class where the teacher was doing this giveaway for like books and games and stuff. And so he, knowing that I loved books, entered this giveaway and used this tick use these tickets that the teacher gave for like doing good in school or something for this giveaway. He won the entire series, the entire Magnus Chase series. It was in this beautiful like set. Like, I don't know what this is called, but it was in this beautiful like box set. This is a Miss Peregrine's box set, by the way. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I don't really have a story. I got this because I was going to participate in this book club that Jacqueline's book club was hosting. But then I never ended up getting to it. I was also going to read it for this other like really special reading block. But I quit pretty quickly because just so many things came up. I still want to do that reading vlog, which is why I'm not saying like the premise behind it. Yeah, also one of the things I just really associate with this book is that it is Eric from Breaking Even Book's favorite book in his profile picture. Like when I think of Red Rising, I think of Eric. And that's the story. I think I'm going to end the video there. I know that this video is more than one minute, so that should be enough content for today. If you guys enjoyed this one, please leave it a like, comment down below. If you like did this challenge, you could do it at your library. You do it at your bookshelf. You do it randomly on like Goodreads or something if you wanted. Or comment down below if you just have any thoughts on this video. I post videos every Tuesday and Saturday. And I will see you next time with another video. Bye.